If you're watching this video, congratulations on your new Mac. You definitely are not going to regret your purchase. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set it up and also show you how to get started with the Mac and Mac OS. I've been using Macs for about 10 years. And a couple of weeks ago, I bought literally every single new Mac that Apple released just to test them all out. So I have a pretty good understanding of the Mac ecosystem. Anyway, without further ado, let's unbox my Mac and I'll show you how to set it up. Okay, so here we have a brand new 2020 M1 MacBook Air. So first things first is obviously we're gonna take it out of the packaging. Now, the first thing you wanna do is just wanna take everything out of the box and just make sure it's all there. So obviously you have the MacBook, You'll also have a USB-C to USB-C charging cable. This is how you can actually charge the Mac. You'll get a little instruction manual with some stickers and stuff inside. And depending on which model Mac you get, you'll also get a power brick. In this case, it's the MacBook Air, which is the smaller charger. If it was a MacBook Pro, you'd have the bigger 60 watt charger. And with this particular charger, it does come wrapped in a protective plastic. And if you take that off, you can actually change the head on this. So if you're traveling internationally, you can swap out this plug with a different country's one and you just snap back on and you're good to go. And obviously the USB-C cable plugs into this, which then goes into your Mac. Now, the first thing you wanna do with the Mac is obviously take it out of the protective cover and you just want to double check and just make sure that it looks brand new. So you wanna look at the screws, see there's no scratches or no scratches on the case, no dents or marks or scratches anywhere. The Apple logo should be nice and shiny because you obviously wanna do this first of all because you wanna make sure that you don't get a Mac that's been used or has been opened. 99.99% of the time, it's gonna be a brand new Mac with absolutely no issues, but it always pays just to double check because if it does look like it's been damaged or it's been used before, just return it straight away. And the next thing you're going to do is you're just going to open up the lid of the Mac. You'll see it does have a protective cover there over the screen. And as soon as you do lift up the screen, it's gonna turn on and you'll see the Apple logo. So we'll just peel off this little piece of paper. And what we'll do now is we'll switch views so you can actually see what I'm doing on the screen. Now, when you first open up the Mac, this is the screen you're going to get. So obviously select whatever language you wanna use and then we'll click the little button down in the corner here. And then again, select your country. So I am in Australia, so I will select that and I'll hit continue. Now, if you want to enable any kind of accessibility features, you can do that here. So say for example, if you have issues with your vision or your motor function or your hearing, you can come in here and set up features that will make the Mac easier for you to use. But I don't need this, so I'm gonna click not now. And you can actually come back and change this later on in the settings, so it's not a big deal. Now, Wi-Fi network, obviously select a network and connect to it enter the password for that network as well. If you're struggling to find the password, generally it's actually on the back of the router you're using, or it'll be written somewhere from the router, especially if you've gotten it from your internet provider. Now this is just a quick disclaimer telling you what this particular icon means. It's essentially the data and privacy icon and it only appears when an Apple feature asks to use your personal information. Now, if you guys didn't already know, Apple is actually pretty good with privacy. So it's actually gonna give you quite a few options and control over what you do and what you don't want to share. So we'll just click continue to this. You don't need to do anything. Now, Migration Assistant is a really cool feature and what it lets you do is it lets you, as the name suggests, migrate information from another computer. So if you've been using a Mac before this, you can migrate it over Wi-Fi or from a time machine disk, or if you're actually using a Windows PC, you can do the same thing. And it's a really easy way to actually import all of your files, such as Word documents or photos or videos. And if you're coming from a Mac, it will also do your programs and settings. But if it's a Windows PC, it's only gonna do your data. So things like photos, Word documents, pictures, and that kind of thing. Now I'm setting this up as a brand new Mac. I'm not putting anything on it at the moment. So I'm actually gonna come down here and I'm gonna select not now. Now Apple ID, if you don't already have one, it's pretty much an essential thing if you're gonna be using this Mac because this is how you're gonna be able to log in to the App Store, download updates, and also have some more control over your Mac, such as turning on a feature called Find My Mac, which is helpful if your Mac is lost or stolen. 
Now again, I'm not gonna do this now. I already have an Apple ID, but I'm just gonna click set this up later because I'm gonna sign in later on. It's gonna give you a warning dialog box. So I'm just gonna click skip again. And this is just some terms and conditions. So if you wanna read that, you can. I don't think anyone ever does. So I'm just gonna hit agree and hit agree again. So this next screen is where you're actually going to set a username and a password for your particular user account. So it's pretty self-explanatory, full name. It doesn't have to be your full name. So I'm just gonna put created labs for that and also the account name. And I'm also gonna change this profile picture because I don't really like it. So we can click on that and then we can go to defaults and then we can scroll down here and we can find a profile picture that we want to use. So I quite like this penguin. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna click save. And password, I'm just gonna enter in a password that I wanna use. And I'll put it in a second time. Now this can be anything, it doesn't have to be uppercase or lowercase, it can literally just be four zeros or A, B, C, D, it doesn't really matter. Obviously do make it secure if you want the laptop to be secure though. Password, hint, that's just a hint for your password, I don't need that, so I'm gonna click continue. Now this is just the express setup option. So essentially all this means is it's just gonna give you the default options and you don't have to go through the menus selecting stuff. So what you can do is I recommend just clicking continue, but if you do want to click customize settings here, I'll show you what it is. So it just allows you to fine tune what you want turned on and what you also want turned off. So for location services, the Mac will be able to tell maps exactly where you are based on your IP address. I'm going to enable that because that's a cool feature. Analytics, if you wanna share analytics with Apple to help Apple itself and the app developers improve their products and services. Now this is anonymous, it's not gonna give them that much information, uh, but you can choose not to do that like me. And I'm gonna click continue. Screen time is a really cool feature. Like it says here, it's just gonna give you some idea of how much time you spend on the Mac each day and each week. And it's actually gonna give you a breakdown per app and per program. So if you notice you're spending a lot of time on Facebook or a particular game, you can actually log that and you can see it change day to day and week to week. I personally use that, it's a pretty cool feature. So I'm gonna click continue and leave that turned on. Now you're probably all familiar with Siri by now and I'm actually going to enable this because I do use Siri from time to time. So I'm gonna click continue and I'm actually gonna now set this up which does require saying a few sentences. Open the documents folder. What's the weather? And as you can see there, that was a really, really simple and straightforward process. Hey Siri is now set up and is ready to use. So we're gonna click continue. Now this gives you the option to improve Siri and dictation by essentially sending your audio to Apple. Now again, this is anonymized, so they're not gonna be able to tell it's you. It's just gonna be snippets of your voice here and there. I don't personally like that. I think that's a little bit intrusive. So I'm gonna go not now. But again, if you do choose to share audio recordings, it's really not a big deal. It really does help Siri. So this choice is totally up to you. So we'll click continue. Now for Touch ID, this is where you're actually going to be able to hold your finger on the little Touch ID slash power button and set up your fingerprint. So you can choose to set this up later or we can choose to set it up now, which I recommend because it's a very, very cool feature if your particular Mac has this. So let's click continue. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna place whatever finger we wanna use with the Mac on the power button several times. And we're gonna lift it up and down. And as you can see there, it's imprinting a fingerprint. And now we're gonna do the edges of the finger. So just kind of rolling it around, do the tip, do the base of the finger. And you can see now the touch ID is ready. Okay, so now we're gonna hit continue to go into the next step. And this is gonna allow you to choose your look. So you can choose light mode, dark mode, or auto, which is essentially going to change it depending on the time of day. So during day, it's gonna be light. During night, it's gonna to switch to dark mode. I'm just gonna set this to auto, but again, you can come back and set this in the system settings if you don't like it later on. Now, True Tone Display is pretty cool. So it allows your Mac screen to automatically adapt to the lighting conditions around you. So if the light in a particular room is like a really yellowy color, the screen on the Mac will change to sort of a brighter white color to sort of offset that. And this is really handy to give you an accurate color on the Mac at all times, regardless of whatever lighting condition you're currently in. And we can see here, if we actually click on this, 
You can see the difference between true tone display a little bit, hopefully through the screen. But to be honest, there's really not much of a difference. So I'm just gonna leave it enabled. I'm gonna hit continue. Now this is just gonna take a few minutes just to finish off. It's gonna apply all those settings we just chose and then take you to the desktop. And as you can see now, the Mac is fully set up and we are ready to go. So what I'll do first of all is show you guys some really quick and handy keyboard shortcuts. Now, if you want to search for something on the Mac, you can actually bring up the spotlight search, which is a little kind of magnifying glass up in the corner here. But if you wanna bring that up easily, you can hold down the command and then press the space bar. And that's gonna bring up the spotlight search and then you can search for whatever you want on your Mac. Another cool one is command and Q, and that's actually gonna let you quit programs. So if, say for example, if we open up Safari, if we hold down command and then we press the Q button, that's gonna shut down Safari. And then another really cool one is hold down command and then press the tab key. And that's gonna let you switch between different programs. So that's very, very handy for multitasking and that kind of thing. Now, if you wanna know how to record the screen for any reason, you can come in here and you can press the spotlight search and you can search for QuickTime, which is a native Mac app. And then we're gonna select QuickTime Player. We're gonna hit File, and then we're gonna click New Screen Recording. And we're going to select Capture Entire Screen. And you can see our cursor has changed to a little camera icon. So we're just gonna click anywhere on the screen. And as you can see up here, you're gonna see a little kind of round circle with a square in the middle, and that means we are currently recording. So what we'll do now is we'll actually jump into the screen now that we're recording and I'll show you a few other things. Okay, so Mac OS is definitely different to Windows. So it might take you some time to get used to it, but just starting off with the basics, if you wanna access files, come down here into Finder, you can click on that and you can see your applications that you've installed or that come stock with the Mac. You can see what's on your desktop, you have a documents folder and you also have a downloads folder. And if we wanna install some applications, there's two ways of doing that. So the first one is we can come into Safari and let's say for example, we want to install Google Chrome, we can just search for that. And then we can come to the downloads for Google Chrome. We can download that. And we're using a Mac with an Apple chip, so I'll select this one. And we'll click allow, because we do want to download that. And there's two places you can access this. So you can see it up here in the top right hand corner, or you can actually come down here to the bottom right hand corner and you'll actually always have a downloads shortcut. And if you click on this, you'll be able to see the Google Chrome application. So let's click on that. And installing apps on the Mac is super, super easy. So once you click on that .dmg download folder, you just wanna come over here and you literally just wanna click on Google Chrome, hold and then drag it and drop it into the applications folder. And that is it. You can see there, it's going to install it and it's gonna copy that particular app to applications. And if we give it a few more seconds until it's done, and if we now shut this down by clicking the little red X, by the way, this is how you close windows. This is how you minimize and this is how you maximize. So just quickly, if we come back to Chrome, we click that green thing, you can see it's now maximized. If we go back up in the corner, unclick that, we go back to window mode. If we click the yellow button, it's gonna minimize it into the tray. And if we click that again, if we click the X button, it's gonna close the window, but it's not gonna close the app. If we wanna close the app, we can come up here to Safari and we can click quit Safari, or we can use that cool little shortcut I did before, Command and then Q, and that will shut Safari down as well. Okay, so let's go into Finder and we'll go to Applications. And if we search for Google Chrome, you can see there it is now installed. Now you will see under Locations, you'll see a Google Chrome entry here. And once you finish installing Google Chrome, you can just eject that. That's just a virtual disk that allows you to actually install applications. So we'll just click the eject button and that will disappear. Now, if you wanna download different apps, you can also come into the App Store down here and you can search for different apps that you want to download. You will have to actually sign into your Apple ID or make an Apple ID before you download, but this is gonna give you access to a lot of different things. So as of a few days ago, if you're using an M1 Mac or any kind of Mac using Apple Silicon, you can get stuff like Office 365 here, but anything you can't download on Google Chrome or Safari, 
you can just come to the app store and there's probably gonna be an app for it. So you can download it from here if you like. Now moving on to the settings, if we hit the Apple logo and then we go system preferences, this is gonna give you access to all of your settings and all of your preferences for the Mac. So for example, we can come in here to desktop and screensaver and we can select a background photo and we can also come up here to screensaver and we can specify after how much time you want the screensaver to start. And if we come back, we can also come into something like displays and we can change the scaling. So if you want the text to be bigger, I just personally leave it at default. And if we come back, there are a lot more things you can do here, but I also recommend coming into the trackpad option if you're using a laptop. And I recommend to turn on tap to click. And that essentially means that you can just tap on a part on the screen instead of actually clicking the trackpad and that's going to select something. Now definitely do spend some time coming in here and familiarizing yourself with the gestures and also scroll and zoom and all the different clicks you can do because there's quite a lot of functionality on the actual trackpad on the Mac. So I hope this video was helpful. I'm not gonna make it too long. This was just supposed to be a very basic introduction to setting up your Mac and Mac OS. If you want more in-depth tutorials and walkthroughs, stay tuned on my channel because I will be making more of these. But apart from that, enjoy your new Mac and hopefully I will see you in another video.